G'day guys. Gee, it's been a hot day today. Now we've got thunderstorms. Anyway, this uh, 7,000 here. Uh, yeah, any 7,000 for that matter. Really difficult to do any work on these in the workshop. The reason being is because uh, any coil I've connected up to it, uh, it you, you don't have a cancel mode on these or anything like that. And uh, the whole thing just went haywire. So what I did, I converted a coil into a cancel coil for this detector so I can actually use it uh, or actually uh, do low noise work uh, in the workshop rather than doing stuff and then have to run out in the middle of nowhere and then come back and run back out in the middle of nowhere and come back and all this sort of stuff. So this makes it a lot easier to do. As you can see, we've got our dongle on there. That's the uh, little communication plug with a little chip in it. And uh, there is an adapter. I just uh, quickly wired him up on the cable and to make a cancel coil all you do is get those uh, receive coils down there on the two outside ones the main one in the middle of the transmit coil and just put them in antiphase and uh, what happens then is uh, that uh, it uh, cancels everything except it'll act like a cancel coil the detector's on it's on very high gain actually it's quite as a mouse if I had something metal, like um, I'll get something metal and just poke it near the coil, so you'd be able to hear it. So you can test um, ground balance, overall sensitivity, compare one detector to another. There we go, let's turn up the audio a bit louder. Actually, I had to turn the threshold right up, this thing's quiet as. But uh, yeah, it's just so that uh, normally you get a normal coil set up. Normally, the thing of going off its uh, nut to be going, you know, making all those wop, 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 carry on sounds. And you can't shut it up. So the only way to do it is uh, you got to get a coil and convert it. You can do it to any of your old, you can even probably do it to a 19 if you really wanted to. Make yourself, um, um, you know, just, just, uh, change the uh, wiring on those uh, two outside coils there and uh, yeah and uh, you've got to please please be quiet shut up and let me work on you so yeah it doesn't have a lot of grunt as such in that mode but uh, yeah, it's very quiet, so you can do some really meaningful measurements, and you can actually uh, set up SigGener and uh, do a frequency sweep make noise uh, purposely, and uh, measure your output signals and try and minimise noise by working on the electronics of the detector. So that's uh, a good thing. So yeah, she's she's on, she's working. And uh, yeah, I'm happy with that. Um, it hasn't got all those lumpy, bumpy ferrites on there because I'm not putting it near ground, so it doesn't make any difference. The ferrites are only on there to stop um, a interaction with the soldering joints <laughs> uh, with ground and causing a uh, an interaction. So yeah, I could do that too, but I, I wouldn't put those big clunker things on there. Uh, because they're reactive in themselves uh, on any of these coils you know like if I get one that uh, yeah one of the one of these things and stick it there probably probably go off <coughs> oh, see what's what's it doing it's reactive to it oh dear me you know you're probably better off now let's see try some try some iron cores <coughs> oh, it still goes off oh I might, I might have the ground balance actually turned off on this uh, because what it was doing, uh, it, it was uh, trying to track everything out that I put near it. So I just turned the ground balance off in the detector and set it to manual. And you yeah, get around that. But yeah, I don't even think you can hear that. I mean, 
Let's listen to it. I'm going to put the microphone directly on the speaker. Yeah, that's, that's how you want your detector to run, don't you? Nice and quiet like that. Oh, dear me. But, yeah. So, next one I've got to do, I've got to do the same thing and uh, uh, do it for a 6,000 as well. So, um, yeah. I'm going to do it for 6,000, but I've got to... Uh, um, get a uh, a busted coil actually that other one i did the other day i think was pretty busted but uh, the customer probably wants it uh i've got that uh, coil check coil over there um for a six but i don't want to i don't want to wreck that it works really well so i don't want to destroy that coil but uh, that, that one there behind it that's a customer's coil from the uh six that i did i've got that one there it's repaired seven uh Oh, I don't know what else I got around. Oh, just um, the rest of them, what uh, five thousands and stuff, forty fives and fives. But um, yeah, I'm pretty chuffed with that. So in that configuration too, we can do some experiments with the coil. Um, it's pretty seven thousand is pretty forgiving. It's the uh, six thousand. You've got to be careful of one. Wrong, one wrong move on that and you'll bloody blow it up. You've got to be careful. Uh, don't don't muck around for six if you don't know what you're doing. Believe me. The seven is a little bit more forgiving. Um, just don't... Uh, well, actually, you could probably put the transmit into the receiver and the receiver into the transmit and it won't work. It's not going to blow anything up. Uh, <laughs> but, um, yeah, if you do anything weird with the six... Uh, It'll, it'll uh, drop its guts, basically. <laughs> it'll it'll uh, stop working. So, yeah, God. Um, it's Because it's rained very lightly, it's gone humid as the damn Philippines, I tell you. Um, it is humid as anything here. Uh, but, yeah, dear me. It, yeah, I'm just, I'm, I'm not going to point the camera at myself. I look like a sweat monster. So... Uh, still, still, um, I think around 30, 30 degrees Celsius um, and very muggy, uh, you know. I don't mind, today I was walking outside, it was 38 degrees, dry heat, didn't care less. Not a problem, I'd go detecting in that, I have done many a time. Uh, just don't get sunstroke, uh, it's the main thing. As soon as the um, humidity comes up, uh, oh my God, it, it, it's so uncomfortable. Uh, you know, it's, it's only, well, it, what is it? It's probably somewhere around 30 degrees or so at the moment. But, uh, yeah, all that rain has just made the air thick with moisture. And, uh, you know, you just feel it all over. It just feels that sticky feeling, and I, I don't like that. Uh, put me in 40-degree heat any day. I don't care as long as it's dry heat. No problem whatsoever. Um, everyone else does a meltdown over it. And I'm out there. I'm in the backyard. I'm you know, doing whatever else I do out there, and uh, it's not a problem. But, uh, yeah, so, guys, um, if you want to muck around with these, the, the th other thing, too, because you've got the main transmit coil there, uh, you can get the receive wires, and you can try for your own, if you only want to muck around, you can try your own receive configurations, too. Uh, those two coils, I think, are about 200 microhenries or something, those two little fine wire ones. Uh, you can, uh, yeah, 205 they are, it's written down there, gee. Uh, and the main transmit coil worked at about 280. So you can uh, make your own coils. They're not that hard to make, actually. Um, you know, it's just, you've got to use Litz wire, though. Make sure you use Litz wire. Um, and, uh, yeah, you know, the transmit coil on these is a bit heavier, too. And I did... Um, some uh, mucking around too. I might as well go I'll do a little bit. Uh, actually, should I mix it? I was going to do a little bit on the six coils and some uh, info on six coils. Uh, some interesting, uh, interesting discoveries to say the least. But I'll save it for a separate video specifically on six because this is seven thousand. If I keep jumping subject to subject in the middle, uh, everyone will miss out on what they want to know about because I only watch the first ten seconds and say, "Oh, it's about seven thousand. Did I want to know about that?" And uh, yeah, go and go and watch something else. You know, go and watch Teletubbies or something like that. But uh, 
you know, we want to, um, uh, yeah, cram as much info in as what we can, but uh, I don't want to um, go all over the shop. Sometimes I do that, of course, but it does make it interesting if people hang around long enough to listen to it all, if, if you're interested. But uh, like I say, this, this isn't a, uh, you know, um, popularity contest or anything like that or, um, you know, the, the, the uh, quest to get 100,000 subscribers because there's not that many people interested in the technical aspect of metal detectors. I know that for a fact. Um, so there it is. It's funny because if I put a, a, a video up and the front front part of the video, the uh, what, what do you want to call it? The uh, splash screen or whatever they call it, I don't know. Um, what um, happens is that if I do it on the workbench, it will get very, very few hits. But if I do it, I'm standing out in the bush with a detector in my hand or something on a big dirt mound or whatever, um, it gets about uh, four times as many hits. So it just goes to show people want to see people running around swinging metal detectors rather than finding out anything technical about them. So people who learn the technical things, probably the people who get all the gold and everyone else is uh, aimlessly uh, walking around um, praying uh, to the Lord that they find something. You've got to understand it all. You can't just go, it's like, you know, put someone in a car and they drive around and then say, oh, well, you're going on the racetrack now, you know, I'll end up smashing into the barrier. But uh, it's... Um, you know, it's you got to learn this stuff. You got to understand. If you understand it, it makes it a lot better and easier to go detecting. That's if you ask me, anyway. Because you know what and not um, to do. And uh, you know, I don't want to be one of these people that go through life and not even understanding how a light switch works. There's plenty of them around. I've got no idea how a light switch works. I'm not joking. They don't. They don't know. My mother doesn't know. She's got no idea. <laughs> probably watch this now and all my brothers will go and say hey go and watch this but um no but there are people around who've got no idea you know <laughs> none whatsoever anyway that's enough of that um I don't want to stir too many people up but yeah anyway guys that is uh how you quieten down a seven if you want to do work on it you've got to sacrifice a, or actually just make a coil up and make a dongle um all you need to do is have, uh, you can actually, I'll tell you what you can do. You can make it out of a double D cable, right, out of a, off an old coil. And all you got to do is run a separate uh, earthing wire, ground wire, and uh, um, you can just run it on the outside of the cable. Just, just twist it around like I did in one of my other videos. It doesn't have to be within the cable. Just make a spiral, -y, a loose spiral around the cable, tape it on. And use it as your ground wire it'll work beautifully on a double d cable uh because basically that's what that is it's uh more or less a uh well sort of a sort of a double d cable but uh uh the two the transmit's not really shielded it doesn't have to be because uh it's acting as a transmission line but the uh receiver is shielded so you, you don't, no you can you can use um uh double d cable use the braid of your transmit and uh the inner uh, as one set of cables. Uh, I don't know if um, doing that will, um, balancing it uh, from an unbalanced position will have any effect. It shouldn't. But if it does, just run just run two lit spores and strap them down there and rip the guts out of the um, uh, double D cable, uh, just the uh, shielded wire. Just strap it all together and connect it up. I mean, it's going to bloody work. It's not going to um, do anything wrong. And uh, also just run your separate earth wire, which is, you know, um, basically an interest, interesting way of rounding. Anyway, uh, yeah, very interesting, isn't it? Uh, hmm. I don't know what they do that for. Uh, it gets rid of noise, actually. But anyway, uh, that's how it all works. But not hard to do. And, uh, and, and I'm sorry, I was going to do a video for um, a fellow overseas who having great issues with his GPX and I was going to get a GPX, stick it on the bench and go and measure all the uh, common test points, and point them out in the oscilloscope because uh, he has got a crow and uh, he's got issues uh, 
in the um, voltage comparator circuit for the flyback. Uh, he said that the FET's okay, but it's nothing there. So that sounds interesting. Um, you might want to check your diodes. I'll make another video. I'll do one quickly after this. I'll put it up. So, and, uh, you know, because because I got, oh, it must be lightning. I heard the detector go, woo. Um, yeah. So I don't want to get off track. 7,000. Okay. Um, get off this and uh, I'll put a, uh, another video up on uh, the other earlier GPXs. Uh, 45, 5,000, basically the same. Um, just run a bit of a, a bit of different uh, software and uh, a bit of uh, different uh, voltage rail to one of the quad op amps, but I can't find anything else different in it. Circuitry is much the same. Uh, anyway, and, and the later 45 is exactly the same as a lot as a 5000 anyway. It's got that uh, extra voltage rail um, or up up to voltage rail from I think it's from five up to eight and. Uh, I don't know. I think that the later ones are not as good as the early ones, in my personal opinion. Uh, they, for some reason, I you know, I mean, it's got little add-ons. It's got it's got a better uh, salt mode, or supposedly, or whatever. Um, but uh, you can put variable frequency, and you get you can vary your salt mode then too, and make it uh, more, um, or show that more, make it less responsive to uh, um, salt stuff like that and turn it back and uh, you do that then you can crank up the gain if you have variable gain on it too oh dear me the thing is you can do um people were asking me about that today so that's what twigged that but anyway uh this is about the seven thousand i've got to get back on topic but i'm getting off topic because i'm getting off this hopefully this time this uh uh phone this iphone shuts down when i hit the uh stop recording button Unlike the other day, I had to turn the power off. Strange. Um, don't know why. But anyway, catches.